Hi everyone, my name is Claire Cook and I'm a PhD student in the Computational Optics Lab. Today I'm going to be sharing a little bit about my work developing a Fourier light field camera array mesoscope for video rate 3D imaging. I want to start by answering two questions. What is mesoscale imaging and why should we care about it? Mesoscale lacks a strict definition, but generally we can say we're aiming to observe microscopic phenomena over macroscopic volumes. More specifically, mesoscale is fields of view on the order of millimeters up to centimeters, while still maintaining resolution on the order of micrometers down to nanometers. While few imaging systems are developed to specifically target this scale, there are still a lot of exciting application spaces. A few that we've been exploring are microsurgery, including stereotaxic rodent surgery, applications in comparative biology, such as studying the flexion and the exoskeletons of small invertebrates, and behavior and morphology in model organisms, such as fruit flies and zebrafish. Despite this range of applications, there aren't many existing solutions for performing video rate 3D mesoscale imaging, and working in this regime presents some unique challenges. On one hand, the fields of view we're interested in are too big and opaque for 3D microscopy techniques, such as Fourier light field microscopy, which make use of microscope objectives designed for much smaller areas. On the other hand, the samples we're interested in are too small for macro scale solutions, such as depth from stereo using multiple cameras, because we can't physically place more than one camera close enough to the sample while retaining adequate resolution. Our solution to this challenge is the Fourier light field camera array mesoscope. In designing this system, we took concepts from Fourier light field microscopy, which is an established 3D microscopy technique, and applied them over a larger scale. The Fourier light field camera array mesoscope, which I'll be referring to as the FL cam, uses a compact array of 48 synchronized micro cameras, each of which has its own multi-element lens and high pixel count CMOS sensor. So in a single snapshot, we can acquire 48 images of the both 3 by 4 centimeter objects, such as the small triceratops, and we can use those images to generate a 3D reconstruction of the object. Before I explain more about the design of our system, I want to explain how Fourier light field imaging works. In its simplest form, a Fourier light field imaging system consists of a large primary lens, often referred to as the Fourier lens, which is collimated and placed in a 4F configuration with an array of smaller lenses. The technique is called Fourier imaging because the apertures for the array lenses are at the Fourier plane of the primary lens. When the lenses are placed in this configuration, each lens captures light from every point in the field of view, but from only a small range of ray angles. In this way, each lens generates an image of the full sample from a unique angular perspective. Each of these individual images is referred to as an elemental image. And this way, all the information needed for 3D reconstruction is acquired in a single snapshot, which allows for high frame rate 3D video. To apply Fourier light field imaging to mesoscale imaging, we need to carefully design the optical hardware, especially our choices for the array and primary lenses. First, we need to choose array lenses and sensors that can acquire high resolution images at high speed. To accomplish that, we use the Multi-Camera Array Microscope, or MCAM, which is a technology previously developed in the Horstmeyer lab. The MCAM has 48 12.7 megapixel sensors, which together can deliver 600 megapixels per snapshot. Our chosen primary lens is this very large Zeiss lens, um, shown here being held by my lab mate Shichi. Um, this was originally designed to image um, an X-ray scintillator response onto large format film. And we're actually using the lens backwards, uh, placing our sample here where the film used to sit. And that allows us to project light from a large area into infinity space while maintaining high resolution, which is necessary for mesoscale imaging. Putting all that together, here is the imaging setup for our current hardware design with the Zeiss lens placed directly in front of the MCAM. And this way we're able to image our sample. And this is a single snapshot of the Triceratops from that system. As you can see, we are able to acquire high resolution images of this three by four centimeter object from 48 unique perspectives. Now we can take these images and computationally reconstruct a 3D rendering of the object. Before I explain our 3D reconstruction algorithm, I want to return to this diagram and review how 3D information is encoded in a Fourier light field system. So in a perfect system, points on the object plane will appear at the same point in every elemental image. 
So zooming in on the sensors in this diagram, we can see that each of our micro cameras would theoretically form an identical image of a flat sample sitting on the object plane. But as an object, as a point in object space shifts axially, its image and each elemental image shifts laterally. And the magnitude of that shift varies according to how far the array lens is from the optical axis. So the image of the point would not shift at all for a lens uh, centered on the optical axis, whereas we see this large lateral shift for a lens sitting further out. We can calibrate the FL cam by measuring these shift vectors across the full field of view for each of our 48 cameras. As we move into 3D reconstruction, backward and forward projection between object and image space is achieved simply by shifting the pixels in our acquired images according to these vector maps. The first thing we can do with our calibrated FL cam is to perform digital refocusing using shift and sum, a common technique in light field imaging where all the elemental images are back projected to a single plane to bring into focus at objects lying at that plane. By performing shift and sum for many discrete planes within our volume of interest, we can begin to visualize the 3D structure of that object. Um, so here with the Triceratops, we can see its head and slowly its face and horns coming into focus as we perform digital refocusing at these different planes. And again, we can create this full volume using just a single snapshot from the system. And since the FL cam can run at high frame rates, we can visualize 3D movement in videos. This is a video of a snapping shrimp. We can pause the video at any frame and perform digital refocusing and also play the video while focused at any arbitrary plane. And so here we can again refocus on the shrimp's claws and it'll snap to finish the video. Of course, what we really want is to be able to generate a dense height map or volumetric reconstruction for our sample. To achieve that, we're using the self-supervised machine learning approach adapted from a previously pub published paper. Um, because the algorithm is self-supervised, we are able to perform the 3D reconstruction for new samples even without previous training data. Here are the results of running that algorithm on the images of the Triceratops. While not yet perfect, we can clearly see the 3D structure of the dinosaur, which we can also display as a point cloud or any other 3D visualization. I'll end my talk today by talking about one application for the FL cam that we're currently focused on, which is stereotaxic rodent surgery. This is a key procedure in a lot of areas of neuroscience research, and it is important to very precisely position the rodent's head in 3D space before surgery. But this is currently a time-consuming and error-prone process. Additionally, it's difficult to monitor the angle and height of tools during operations, which can lead to a really high failure rate. We want to improve 3D visualization and ultimately surgical outcomes using the FL cam. Here's a snapshot of an ex vivo rat skull from the FL cam, and you can see we're acquiring detailed information across the full surface of the skull. Then, using the previously de described algorithm, we can take that single snapshot and generate a 3D rendering. The skull here is about 8 millimeters tall, and we're able to visualize the 3D structure over that full depth. We can also zoom in on the top surface of the skull. Now we can clearly see the curvature of the surface, and it also becomes apparent that the skull is tilted relative to the imaging system. This type of visualization could allow surgeons to easily make corrections and ensure the skull is properly positioned before surgery. Finally, operating the FL cam at video rate, we can see in 3D how tools are moving over the surface of the skull and give surgeons detailed information about the position and angle of their tools. Looking to the future, there's a lot of exciting potential work we're hoping to do with the FL cam. This will include demonstrating and validating our quantitative 3D tracking in microsurgery to hopefully eventually drive microsurgical robotic systems. We also want to develop software to measure 3D exoskeleton deformations in snapping shrimp and other invertebrates, and finally study high resolution 3D behavior in model organisms. Here are some acknowledgements um, to my lab mates, collaborators, and funding sources. Thanks so much for listening.